Previously, we discussed plane mirrors, which produce virtual and upright images that are the same size as the object. To find the location of the image, we just applied the principal law of reflection at the surface of the mirror. Now we want to curve the surface of the mirror so that it is no longer flat. The most common type of curved mirror is a spherical mirror. Imagine cutting out a small section of a spherical shell, as shown in the figure. There are two types of spherical mirrors that we can make, depending on which surface of the section we polish so that it produces specular reflections. If we polish the inside surface, then we create a concave spherical mirror. If we polish the outside surface, then we create a convex spherical mirror. The figures show a concave and convex spherical mirror. A line that runs through the center of each mirror is called the principal axis of the mirror. Each mirror has a radius of curvature r, which is equal to the radius of the sphere from which the segment was cut and point C locates the center of curvature of the mirrors. Even though the surface of a spherical mirror is curved, when a light ray strikes the mirror, it still obeys the law of reflection at the surface. First, imagine a light ray that strikes a concave spherical mirror. We draw in the normal to the surface and show that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. A concave spherical mirror therefore reflects light rays toward the principal axis. Consider now a light ray reflecting off of a convex spherical mirror. Again, we draw in the normal to the surface and show that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Therefore, we see that convex spherical mirrors reflect light rays away from the principal axis. Now imagine an object, say a tree for example, which is located in front of a concave spherical mirror. A point on this tree lies on the principal axis of the mirror and is beyond the center of curvature C. Light rays emanate from this point and reflect from the mirror, consistent with the law of reflection. If the rays are near the principal axis, they cross it at a common point after reflection. This point is called the image point. The rays continue to diverge from the image point as if there was an object there. Since light rays actually come from the image point, the image is called a real image. If we now move the tree really far away from the mirror, essentially at infinity, then the light rays arriving from the tree will all be parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. Upon reflection, they pass through a special image point on the principal axis known as the focal point of the mirror. The distance from the mirror to the focal point is called the focal length. Therefore, the image of an object located infinitely far away from the mirror forms at the focal point of the mirror. With a little geometry and some properties of similar triangles, it is easy to show that the focal length of a concave spherical mirror is equal to one half of the radius of curvature. Likewise, a convex spherical mirror also has a focal point. The figure shows light rays coming from an object very far away, so the light rays are parallel to the principal axis. Upon reflection, the light rays head away from the principal axis. Clearly, the reflected rays from a convex mirror are diverging and will never intersect to form a real image. However, if we extrapolate the reflected light rays back behind the mirror, we see they appear to emerge from a common point. This is the focal point of the convex mirror. The distance from the mirror to the focal point is known as the focal length just as it was for the concave case. Again, it is easy to find a relationship between the focal length and the radius of curvature. In this case, the focal length of a convex spherical mirror is equal to negative one-half of the radius of curvature. The focal length relationships shown above are only valid for paraxial rays, which are rays that are close to the principal axis. While parallel rays close to the principal axis are all reflected through the focal point for a concave spherical mirror, those that are further from the axis are not, as the figure shows. This results in images that are not sharp, but are blurry. This effect is known as spherical aberration, and it affects convex mirrors as well. One can avoid spherical aberration by using mirrors that are not spherical, but instead are parabolic. All parallel rays, regardless of the distance from the principal axis, get reflected through the focal point of a parabolic mirror.